Functions and methods are used to perform calculations or other transformations on inputs. We will make extensive use of these to compute statistics, to estimate model parameters, and to visualize data. Methods are functions that are attached to an object, for example, a data frame. Methods take the object as their first input, which is hidden when calling the method. For example, these two invocations of mean are identical. Python functions can use positional arguments, where the order determines how the input is treated, and keyword arguments, where the name of the input is explicitly provided. Functions may also return more than one value, which can be optionally unpacked when calling the function. Open the Lesson 6 notebook. The first cell is populated with code that loads data from a CSV file. We will cover importing and exporting data in a later lesson, so for now, let's run the cell. This loads the data into a data frame, prints the first five rows, and then assigns two columns, each of which is a series, to new variables. Columns in a data frame are accessed using dictionary-like syntax, where the key is the column name. If you see an error that indicates data momentum.csv does not exist, you should take two steps. First, close the folder under File, Close Folder, then open the folder containing the notebooks, which is in Course Introduction. It is essential that the open folder has the notebooks in its root, since VS Code treats directories as relative to the open folder. Methods are functions that are attached to an object. They operate on the object they are attached to. We will make extensive use of methods attached to NumPy arrays in Pandas data frames and series. A method is called a method is called using a dot after the object it is attached to. For example, in a NumPy array, the mean method is accessed using array.mean followed by a closed set of parentheses. The parentheses contain any arguments used by the method. The mean function does not require any additional arguments. The reshape method requires the new shape of the array. In this case, the original three element, one dimensional array, is reshaped into a three by one, two dimensional array. The first problem examines calling methods. A method is a function that operates on the object that it is attached to. Pandas series and data frames contain many methods, including most common statistics. For example, the method mean computes the mean, and the method std computes the standard deviation. Let us get started by calling the mean method on mom01 and running the cell. The value shown is the average return in percent per day in the dataset. Next, we can call the standard deviation method, std, and run the cell. Continuing, we can call the skewness method skew. Running the cell shows that the data has a negative skew. Next up is the kurtosis. This is the excess kurtosis relative to a normal, and so the returns are heavy tailed since the value is larger than zero. Continuing, we can compute the min and the max. We can use a single print statement to show all of these values in a single line. The print function accepts any number of variables separated by commas. Running the cell summarizes the data. Pandas is batteries included, and so data frames provide methods for most common tasks. For example, the describe method produces a collection of summary statistics about the contents of a series or the columns of a data frame. Here we see describe computes the mean, standard deviation, the min and the max, and three quantiles, including the median. Count contains the number of non-missing values. Functions are much like methods, except they usually require one or more inputs. Python supports different conventions for calling functions. All start with the function name, followed by parentheses. The values in the parentheses are the inputs to the functions. 
we will often make use of positional arguments. In both examples here, A is the first input. In the second example, B is the second input. The functions know the order of the inputs, and these are mapped to the function arguments in the order provided. The other important paradigm uses a function's parameter names as keyword arguments to specify how the inputs are assigned. These examples indicate that A is assigned to data and B is assigned to index. Finally, it is possible to mix the two with one important caveat. Positional arguments must come before keyword arguments. We will frequently use the mix syntax to pass common inputs using positional arguments and rare, usually optional inputs, with keyword arguments. The next problem asks us to repeat the previous set of summary statistics using functions from NumPy and SciPy. NumPy provides basic functions like mean, standard deviation, STD, min, and max. We will start by working through these. The mean is computed using np.mean and the data as its only required input. Running the cell shows the mean, which matches the value above. We can then write the code that computes the standard deviation, the min, and the max. Adding a print and running this cell, we can see the values of these four statistics. SciPy extends NumPy with less essential, but still common statistical measures like skewness and kurtosis. We need to import the stats module to get access to these functions. Stats.skew computes the skewness. Stats.kurtosis computes the excess kurtosis, like the curt method on a pandas data frame. We can add these to the print statement and take a look at the results. The values computed using NumPy and SciPy are either identical or very similar to those computed using the methods. These differences are all down to implementation details that affect the finite sample bias adjustments of the different implementations. While many functions return a single output, some functions return two or more. Some functions even have a variable number of outputs that depends on the function's inputs. Multiple outputs are returned as a tuple. This allows them to be unpacked later using positional indexing. It is also possible to directly unpack the output into variables using a list of variable names separated by commas. This comes with one important caveat. The number of variable names must exactly match the number of values returned. Slogdet, or signed log determinant, is an example of a function that returns two outputs. The outputs are the sign of the determinant of the matrix and the log of the absolute value of the determinant. To use this function, we first need a two dimensional array. Let us create the array in the problem using a list of lists, one for each row in the array and the NumPy array function. We now call np.linalg.slogdet on the array we created. While I said that this function returns two values, we can always assign the output of a function to a single variable. Let's call the function with a single output and print its value. The output is a tuple with two elements, and so we could select the element we want using item selection. We can also directly unpack the two outputs by supplying two values on the left side of the equal sign. Using this form, we can skip the step of accessing the elements using brackets. The downside of this approach is that we must exactly match the number of outputs. Here, if I use three or more outputs, I will see an error.
Python functions may have both required and optional arguments. A function or method signature indicates the type of an input. Required inputs are separated by commas and, importantly, do not have an equal sign. Optional inputs appear as parameter equals default value. If these parameters are not set when calling a function, then the default value is used. Linspace is a function that produces an equally spaced set of points in an interval between start and stop. By default, it is inclusive of the stop value. It also produces 50 values by default. Reading the function signature that appears on this slide, we see that start and stop are required since no default values are given, and that the other parameters are optional. The default value of the other parameters also appears in the signature. We call linspace on the interval 0 and 1 and ask it to produce 11 points. Since num is the third argument, we can call this function by placing 11 in the third position. Running the cell containing the function parameterized with 0, 1, and 11 produces a set of points equally spaced between 0 and 1. Python functions often accept many arguments. Most of these are optional, and so use the param equals default format in the signature. When calling functions that have optional inputs, it is common to pass the optional arguments using param equals value. Let us call com from scipy special using only two of the required arguments. Using 10 and 5 produces 10 choose 5, or 252. We can then call the function with some different default values. For example, we can set repetition to true to compute the number of five element sets from a group of 10 objects if we allow repetition. This is an example of a keyword argument. Note that the position of a keyword argument does not matter. This value is always assigned to repetition in the function. Running the cell produces a larger number, 2002. The third argument to com is exact which tells com to work in integers when true. The default value of false produces a floating point number, which we can see above since the return value ends in dot zero. Let us call comb with exact set to true. First, we will call it using positional arguments, 10, 5, and true. We can then call it using the keyword argument for exact. These two function calls are identical. Personally, I prefer to use positional arguments for common inputs, which are usually the only required ones, and keywords for uncommon inputs. I feel this split makes my code easier to read. Function help is integrated in Python. In a notebook, you can get help for a function or method using the question mark operator. As of late 2019, this does not work when using Visual Studio Code, although I suspect it will be implemented soon. You can also use the built-in help function, which takes one argument, a function, or the method attached to an object. Finally, we can look at the built-in help. If you are using PyCharm or the Jupyter Notebook server to view this notebook, you will see the help file for Kurtosis when you run the next cell. If running Visual Studio Code, this feature has not been implemented. You can always use the function version of help in any of the development environments. This is just help followed by a function or method. Let us get the help for stats.kurtosis. Finally, let us get the help for momentum.curt using the function. Momentum is a data frame, and so curt is a method.
we can look at the integrated help in Jupyter Notebook Server. Here, I have opened Lesson 6 in the Notebook Server. I first import the stats module and then enter stats.kurtosis question mark. Running the cell produces a new window that shows the function's help, including the signature at the top and the doc string, which describes the parameters. We can also look at PyCharm. I start by opening Lesson 6 Notebook. Scrolling down to the cell with stats.cartosis question mark, I can run the cell using the light bulb menu. This produces the introspection window that appeared at the bottom that shows the same help that we saw in the Jupyter server. I can also enable scientific mode. If I remove the question mark, I see the help in the integrated document viewer. I can also click on the link at the bottom to see the help online. This only opens the help homepage, and so I need to search for Kurtosis to find the function help. I rely heavily on web-based help when using an unfamiliar function. The additional rendering of the help file simplifies the reading of the doc string. Functions and methods are used to transform input in useful ways. We will use these to compute statistics, fit model parameters, and to visualize data. Methods are functions that are attached to an object, which take the object as a hidden input. Function and method parameters can be provided as positional arguments, where the order of the argument matters, or by using parameter name as keyword arguments. Help is available using the question mark operator in a Jupyter Notebook, the built-in help function, or through the web.